the last year cruising around the Pacific has been a dream come true for all of us. We sailed to untouched paradises, oh, <laughs> dived in pristine reefs, had numerous magical encounters. We met the friendliest and most welcoming people we've ever met. And well, we had the best crew and sidekick that we could have asked for, our beloved Peanut. We were living in a rugged world, away from the hustle and bustle of the cities, deeply connected with nature and ourselves. This season, a change is coming. A city! A full warm city! You will meet new faces, places and unexpected dangers. Hard. Hard. And well, fixing broken parts will be our daily mission. What awaits us is gonna blow your mind. During our first months, we meet the locals and their lifestyles, their unique houses, and we explore luscious rainforests, gushing waterfalls, and exotic wildlife. After the crossing for Solomon Islands, we arrived to a remote tropical city called Cairns, where we got instantly immersed into a peculiar culture, and we did it well. So, welcome to Australia, mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore the planet both above and below the surface and see what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. We made it to Cairns and we've been placed in this nice, nice, rolliest of anchorages. We are all by ourselves, and I'm pretty confident we were the last boat that they let in, which, uh, thank you, Australia. Like, me to you, thank you. We, we were a boat with nowhere to go, and uh, you could have turned us away. You really could have. You, we uh, need to be in quarantine for some time now. Uh, so, all is well here. Our coronavirus disaster is coming to an end. And so those of you that reached out to us to see where we're at in the world and if we're okay, uh, we are now and uh, we do appreciate your concern. And uh, we really appreciate our support system. And um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. And, and thanks for thinking about us through this time of craziness. Uh, I said this to the crew last night. You know, it's kind of like 9-11 where people you always ask people, like, where were you when you found out about 9-11? You know, I feel like our grandkids are going to be like, where were you when coronavirus struck? And uh, what did you do? And you're, you'll talk about your quarantine situation. You'll talk about how things went crazy and bonkers. And for us, well, we'll have to talk about how we were kind of removed from it all and we felt like it was like a different planet to us and then we'll talk about how we were stuck at sea because of it so as much as the hardship is it's, it's an interesting story and when we all look back on this in 20 years hopefully that's the mindset that we have how's our quarantine going <laughs> It hurts. <laughs> it's a hurting quarantine because we haven't been lucky and it's the rolliest anchorage we have ever been. Like any slice, like the current goes one way and the wind blows the other way. So there is no escape. And it's almost impossible to, to do exercise or a stretch and when we're working editing videos and it's painful. It hurts. Yeah. The drawers just flew out while we were talking. It's so rolly. <laughs> oh, we were uh, training the bilches. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit sick. Five, six, seven, eight. Quarantine, right? I can't. The days just roll into one at this point. <laughs> yeah. The time has come to finally check in. We're saying goodbye to this rolly anchorage. Quarantine. It's been real. We've been playing a lot of board games, doing a lot of editing, contemplating life, all those things. The same as you. And um, yeah, just all in it together. But yeah, we're gonna switch out our flags. I feel like that this is now the start of the new season. We are checking in to Australia. You love dancing in the rain. You never
Never mind a cloudy day Make the world a better place You love dancing in the rain Hello party people! We are making it to Australia finally after six and how many days in total since we left Solomon? Like two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, we're in quarantine. We're also gonna buy a few stuff to keep uh, working here in the agri barrier. So yeah, yeah. let's do it quickly. Yeah. We've heard that um, the biosecurity of Australia is one of the most strict in the world for sailboats. And for example, we met someone in Solomons who said they got quarantined for having like one ant on their boat. And we definitely have a thing crawling here and there. We may or may not have a rat still living on board. We haven't seen it in a few months. So yeah, we have, we're all like, we're out of quarantine, woo woo woo. But there's also a chance that when we get there, we could be quarantined a bit more. The bank is waiting for us. Woo! Oh, my darling, smitten at the sight of you. I'm falling. Every little thing you do, I'm falling. Forever yours is true. Oh, we feel it all at once. Suddenly it just adds up. So we are actually up the Cairns River uh, inlet. Uh, so way up here, this is just like a spider web of rivers and crocodile territory. It feels a little bit like um, Everglades or Florida to me. Uh, so it just kind of has that same feel to it, kind of like even the people. It's kind of like we're in the south. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. So uh, over here behind me, there's a huge ferry and um, they've turned that into a, a building where George, uh, his family, and him live. This place is called the Rum Jungle, and uh, when I talked to George, I was like, we found the right guy. He just seemed like a, a good old boy and seemed like somebody we could definitely have some fun with. All right, we're here at the Rum Jungle. This looks exactly how I thought it would look. Look at this side. It's got legs hanging up off of it. Do you guys happen to know where George is? Oh, cool, man. They have that same southern hospitality, but here maybe it's northern hospitality. Yeah, a little bit different. Yeah. It reminds me of what's upside down. It reminds me a little bit to Tokyo Bay. Tokyo Bay? Yeah. Yeah, I feel it. My brother. Good. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm Nate. You're Nate. Nate. You're Nate. 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 And we gotta get some intros. What's your name, my friend? My name's Brad. I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. And I got inspiration from these guys. That's cool. So thank you. He's got a giant cat. He thought we went big and had no idea what we were doing. He, he jumped right. He's like, well, these fools can do it. At least he's a carpenter. So he got this. No dude. boat license yet either. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. It's okay. It's okay. Don't tell Australia. We won't post this until we're both out of the country. Yeah, all right. That's good. Cool. That's cool. This is Dave. Fire Dave. Yeah. Fire Dave. Fire Dave. There you go. One leg Dave. One leg Dave. <laughs> and what's your name, your little man? Yeah. And your name? Kiara. Kiara? Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay, and? Jody, hello. Jody, <laughs> nice. Today we do as the locals do, we're gonna go throw down some of these nets, and we're gonna hopefully get some mud crabs. We'll get them. I've never had a mud crab. Oh, it's been a sad existence, my friend. You'll love it. Yeah? yeah. Both hands. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's 
it's not even frozen oh, anymore. Oh, I wish you guys could smell that one. <laughs> and then if you got the white rope to tie it on with. Yeah, white rope. Oh, white rope. Little piece of white rope with right my there. slimy, right there. sticky oh. hand. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Put it in the net. You're lucky you can't smell that. <laughs> smells way worse than the dead fish. Yeah. Luckily on YouTube you can't smell it. Yeah. <laughs> They're, they're missing out on the, the full experience. <laughs> one day, one day. So uh, apparently that's mud crabbing, I'm learning about it with you. That's my first time and now we go back in about two hours and we go check our, our mud crab pots they call them and uh, hopefully we got some big, big, they call them bulls, <laughs> uh, mud crabs. I like it here, I really do. I'm actually really stoked to just be chilling up the inlet in a place that feels like a little bit like home to me. So it seems like my people. Boom, 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 fast forward. Here we are, it's night. Here we are. I'm joining this time. Yeah, you missed the Skeeter action earlier. I <laughs> did miss the Skeeter action. I heard it was pretty bad. Was it that bad? It was bad. Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. Red eyes, red eyes on the water. Close the line, just a little drop. There's a crab right here on the big tree. <laughs> Do we have any crab? Nothing. Ooh, got a little something. What you got? This is our first mud crab. <laughs> Sophia, as you know, we have a nice little machine shop. So there's a drill press, a lathe, which is very unique on a boat. But unfortunately, um, it's not working. We can't really figure out why, but there is someone on shore. He's known as a wizard because he can apparently fix anything. And he has a long white beard, uh, real interesting character. So plan is to go to shore, find out uh, what's going on with him, and uh, he really, really wants to come to the boat and fix a lathe. Like, he's very excited about a lathe on a sailboat. So, let's go find him. Okay, as you know, we have um, a steel boat, and that's why uh, fixing uh, all the rust all the time and fighting the corrosion is a big thing. Uh, we have to be constantly uh, working on it. Most common thing is that we take out the rust with a grinder and, and then we reach the steel that is behind the paint and then we put the primer and then we put uh, we paint it again like a protector yeah and then it separates uh, from the environment. So do we have here much? So we have some uh, visitors gonna help us out with our lathe and then we're gonna help them out. They need a special tool uh, to help them with their boat. So this yeah. is, um... Can you introduce yourself? Uh, they call me the wizard. The wizard. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> nickname? Jeff. Jeff. The wizard and Jeff. Nice to meet you both. So welcome to Sylvia. And I let you with mud. Yeah. I give you. I let you with hands. Hey, how you doing, brother? We got some visitors. Doesn't happen too often these days. Huh? See if yeah. the wizards can work some magic. Yeah. <laughs> See if you need some magic now. Show us the uh, magic one. Uh, the magic of the wizard. Hashtag beard goals. Yeah. So what we think it is, is that there are three safety switches on the lathe. 
and at least one of them is a faulty connection or a loose wire. Wires return. So it's all in series? Is yeah, it? so yeah. you can see this yellow wire goes into this micro switch, then a yellow one comes back out, and then it'll go into another one, and then it'll come back out and go into another one. And I'm, I'm betting that the orange one is is this one here. Okay. Um, and it's, it should be, see that should be normally on, and at the moment it's, it's, uh, well, I don't know. It's, I'm, gu I'm guessing it's that one. So this is a safety switch? Uh, it's just a micro switch. Putting on the new chuck. There's the four door. Lastana, what's happening today? Today I'm gonna cut my hair. Finally, Nerea has been saying that every day. Now nah, today I'm gonna, I'm gonna Don't cut lie. It, and I'm gonna have my normal look again. I don't Short. Know. I hope. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's very risky. It's it the first be, time that I cut somebody's hair. Yeah, it's <laughs> the first time, so it can be a big mess, a disaster. But I don't care. I, I don't like long hair, so no worries. If we mess it up in a couple of weeks, you will grow again. You will see the results right now. Okay. <laughs> We have Tiger King here. <laughs> Look at this mullet. Super hairy right now. It's like a beast. Yeah. A beast with a little dangly dongle on them. <laughs> you look like the baby from uh, Monster Thing. The little, oh, yeah. the little tiny ponytail on top. The sideburns though, they look very like, distinguished. Yes. Yeah, like they, yeah, look, they look powerful. Fuck. Yeah, I, I have I, You're just like, like, like I sorry, don't sorry. move. I don't move. I don't move. I don't move. Sorry. Great. So oh. how bad when you move? Oh. Oh, you, can, you can still be a sex symbol. We'll still love you. I mean, I was doing a really, like, <laughs> great job. And it's like, okay. It's nice and eerie too. Oh, it's hey, so nice. Thank you. Handsome as always, last time too. Yeah, pose almost. For me, pose for me. Almost, almost. Give me that look. It's Give me that look. <laughs> it's not so bad, eh? Yeah, I, I really prefer short hair <laughs> like, like this. Wapo! I feel, I feel way better now. So we're finally on shore to meet the neighbors and I'm gonna get the backstory of this giant boat up here and find out what the hell, how to get it up here. I got the goon bag. Ready to go talk some story. Let's find out. You stripped of all your armor, you can find a field of breeze. So behind me is a Manning Ferry. If you're not, uh, if you're not familiar with the Manning Ferry, is it's a, a ferry that they used to take from Sydney Harbour over to Ma Manning Island. It has ferried 500 million people. Her original name was the uh, the Baron Joey, and then they turned her into the North Head many years later. It's kind of interesting because she's got a bow on both sides. Okay, because she just goes one way and then she comes back the other way. It's just like that's their route, back and forth, back and forth. She did her service, I think, for close to 100 years, and then um, she was moved over to Tasmania, uh, where she was built into a restaurant. She was there for a decade or two, somewhere in there. And at some point, I think that this is where most people from Australia kind of like lose the history of the vessel, she made her way up to Cairns. Uh, on the way here, uh, something happened with the engine and she actually had to go in reverse, okay? So she went reverse all the way from uh, somewhere up the coastline all the way up to Cairns, and that landed her in the Guinness World Record for the longest trip going backwards by a vessel, okay? She got up here to Cairns, she sat up the, uh, the Cairns River for many, many a years, so my friend George came across her and 
it looked too good to be true, so he saved this boat from probably making its way down to the bottom of the Pacific. Um, she probably would have been a very cool dive site, but here he uh, has plans to turn her slowly into his beautiful home and a museum of sorts. He's a collector of really eccentric cool items, and as I walked through it, I was like, this is really, really sweet. So we're going to get the story of like how it got here on land, because she's actually far up on land, and this is a heavy boat. And if you're Australian, uh, I definitely recommend coming and checking her out. And if you saw her up the inlet, now you know. We'll give you the still full backstory at North Head. We'll start here in the bar. Woo! <laughs> Quick track down the man. He's trying to run away. That's the original hole where the ferry was supposed to be because uh, they didn't bring a big enough tug. This is where she landed and it's quite good because uh, we've got one hell of a good view from here. Right where they're standing, we had the Cairns Harbour Master, yeah. the Minister for Transport, yeah. his offsider, and everything was standing right there where you are when the vessel came in. Is it okay to say how much you paid for? <sighs> the vessel daughter. cost me a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Cost me my grey hair. Mm -hmm. Um, three hundred dollars. But you spent Australian, all of course. Australian, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, God. but it cost you a hundred thousand oh. dollars to put it in. Yeah, yeah. Don't ever do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so you dug a moat straight from here to back into the river, we, like right uh, through here. We excavated a channel. Yeah. From here, uh, one hundred and twenty meters long, mm -hmm. thirty meters wide, six meters deep and we excavated it to government requirements on a batter of 30 degrees, mm -hmm. which meant we pulled out 300 and something cubic meters of marine mud. Hmm. How many years did it take you from, like, from, from getting the boat months. to landing in here? Six months. Six months. Wow. That's pretty fast. Well, I used to have hair <laughs> like that. <laughs> now it's like this because of this boat. Did you hear about the boat? Um, I actually drove past it. So I read the so, book on her, and the book ended somewhere, I think, in like the, I don't know, early 2000s. Mm. And it, pretty much the book ends with this vessel being a restaurant in Tasmania. Yeah. Who was the person that decided, I'm going to take this from Tasmania up to Cairns? Okay. The gentleman that bought the vessel, really nice bloke, Jim Hickman, mm -hmm. is his name. He took it down to Tasmania with a consortium of himself. Um, they, they, they set it up, they tried to get surveyed, they tried to make it, they run it really, really well. Um, unfortunately, every man that buys a boat, you guys all know this, anyone that buys a boat ends up divorced. Um, and of course divorce came through at the same time as he had uh, terminal cancer. So he had no option but to get rid of the boat. He sold it to a consortium of millionaires here in Queensland. One of them apparently was a bit of a rogue. Um, they bought, they spent two and a half million dollars on the vessel, re-roofing it, doing everything, getting it ready to bring up. It steamed itself up from Tasmania all the way through. As, as you said, towards Sydney, it turned around, came back. Um, but it, uh, when it got here, there was a problem with Port Douglas turning into a casino. Arguments, problems, something, there was something not right. He ended up with a vessel himself, then he went bankrupt, left it in the inlet for seven years. The um, derelicts got on board, they removed all the brass steel, they took everything they could out of the vessel, basically broke all the windows. Um, it started to sink. He put it on eBay for sale for 25 grand. This bloke bought it, and that's where it went from there. So it was degraded when I got it, it was terribly degraded. It looks terrible now, but it's a hell of a lot better than what it actually was. <laughs> Inside's good, outside's terrible. I think she's beautiful. <laughs> I do. I, I really love it, do. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you think you're beautiful too. Yeah, Have you looked at you lately? I do. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I, like, there's something about shiny new stuff, and then there's something like that thing's got history. Like that, that's, She's got history. There's yeah. no doubt about that. Yeah. yeah. And as anybody who's ever had Is a he home. still asking questions. Yeah. Anybody who's ever had a home knows this, like you get the home and you have all this empty space and you're like, oh, I got to fill it with stuff. So my question is, did you already have a lot of this, this stuff? treasure? I'm going to call it treasure. Did you already have this treasure? Or did you like, okay, I gotta put some stuff in this boat now, and you just like started getting the treasure? Well, I did have a big house on the Gold Coast, mm -hmm. and I couldn't afford furniture, so I sort of produced six children. Yeah. And that filled the house up pretty well. 
fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've been too busy with my second wife to make children, so I've got to buy shit. Mm. Basically, old crap. That's why downstairs is full of old crap. I'm treasure. Go back to treasure. Treasure. Yeah, uh, one man's crap is another man's treasure. <laughs> and you put it in your house, so I know you think it's treasure, or you wouldn't have put it there. So. Okay, I walk in here, one, this bed's super cool. One of my favorite movies when I was growing up was called Swiss Family Robinson. And they built like this giant tree house and like the, the ceiling lifted up and when I walk in here it kind of has that that cool jungle vibe to it. The shower has got to be like the best view I've ever seen of any shower ever. So you can see our boat from this shower and then when we shower we can see this boat. So it's kind of like a weird... Uh... I know each other really well. Yeah, we know each other really well. Really good friends over this past month. Yeah. Who doesn't dream on a bus stop like this in their house, you know? If you have enough space. And downstairs is the ladies' formal room, so the gentlemen can't get to them. And uh, <laughs> that was the formal room downstairs. Yeah. And if you've got the, you've got the photos, and sometimes I used to walk in the room, we've changed it now, but you'd walk in, you'd, you'd feel a shiver because you could see the stiletto marks on yeah. the floor. And you could see where the people were. Like, you're talking 80 years ago, and it was quite amazing. So, I feel like we're like filming like MTV Cribs. <laughs> Matt's too young to know about MTV Cribs, but that's back. Or what's the the other one? Like Lifestyles, the rich and the famous. One of those. We are in the kitchen, and it's beautiful. We got, we got butcher block. And this is a beautiful kitchen. We had a little uh, shindig here the other day, and. Us, we like we, we cook in our tiny little galley. Beautiful countertops and stuff. Beautiful kitchen, and it looks like a commercial kitchen, Brad. Whoa! Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. We found something that doesn't belong. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> this thing. This is way too fancy. Right. Yeah, that'd be a good choice. Right. Uh, there. Thanks, little baby girl. Uh, this is the ultimate whiskey trailer, you know, like you have your bottles there and your glasses there and then the ice cubes here and if somebody comes, you came with the trailer, like, what drink do you want? Whiskey on the rocks? That will be like the ultimate drink set up for me. Since you um, started working on the boat, yeah. Oh, this is painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. In the Philippines, you're from the Philippines. Yes. Is it very common for for women to be doing this kind of things no, in the Philippines? Not really. Well, sewing is not. You know, it's it's women stuff, but painting not really. No, we don't do that though. Neither is concreting or welding. Yeah, or that's right. Yeah. It's very cool you're, that you. Have a chance to, to do a lot of things, yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's nice to learn something new, you know, and then achieve something afterwards. Mm. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Think about the boat so far. Matt. The boat's pretty incredible. It's um, it's just really interesting because you can see like just in the uh, floors, you really feel that 500 million people have walked past it. Like it's just worn, and it's it's quite amazing to have. You know, a piece of history, a piece of Australian history, and yeah. So we have a weakness in this house, and it's called the karaoke room. So they have this cinema room, and they also have like a karaoke machine. Yeah, I don't know, like it's, oh, I, I was like shocked when they told me and every time we have been here we've been singing and do you wanna, do you wanna hear us sing a song? Let's go, let's go to the Yeah. Okay, two, one, three. When you come by name, I'll have no choice in the midnight hour. Three, two, two. two.
next time in Expedition Drenched, we go exploring the surroundings with a new crew member and we help rescuing a catamaran from sinking in the middle of the night. Come on, give me your best hair move. Hair what? Hair move. I don't know what to do with my hair right now. <laughs> I mean, I think we cannot complain because for sure there will be families and kids. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm a teacher, so I know what it's like to be hours and hours in a school trying to teach them something. And now I, I really feel sorry for all the families. <laughs> Get some goon in there before we do this too. So what, who do we have here? Introduce yourself. We have a visit in Sofia. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> yeah. you, you knew the risk coming here. Yeah. <laughs> the last year cruising around the Pacific has been a dream come true. Has been a dream. Has been a dream come true. <laughs> The last year cruising around. <laughs> no. <What> the fuck? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Welcome to Australia, mate. Welcome to Australia, mate. Sing, it's floating. Oh, yeah, no one's coming so up obvious. here in the next two hours, right? Oh, we oh, saw this guy go past we'll, Dave's we'll be before, and he's like. That's the guy that goes and checks everybody's crab balls. <laughs> I go, just leave, so you leave the crab balls? Like, yeah, he leaves crab balls, but you just take some crab balls. I'm like, are you sure? You just don't catch anything. Oh, <laughs> cutthroat!